Are we, are we recording? Yeah. Oh, okay. Just, <laughs> my whole goal pretty much was to have kind of like an open concept for the most part with some of the big arches. So you see we did one of the 24 inch arches on the left hand side. Yeah. Kind of brought it over and we used the Carob C light rod. I'm happy with it. It came out really good. I think that cement, I mean, you can hardly even see it. If it was purple, you'd never know. Mm -hmm. I'd never know that it was. I mean, that rock goes together really well. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Real Reefing TV, where I help you save time, money, and frustration in the real reefing hobby, sharing my experiences and knowledge. And today we get um, a unique opportunity to uh, see a different tank on this channel and a different build. And so I have Tim here with me. He's the owner of this absolute dream tank, a dream build, and he's gonna tell us a little bit about the equipment that he purchased for this tank, um, all before even um, setting up the tank and, and getting it built and everything like that. So a lot of planning went into this tank. Tell us about like the start of like when you decided that you were gonna be able to buy the tank and, and get everything and how that went. Well, funny story is it pretty much started for my birthday. Uh... My fiance got me a shirt with, uh, says life is short, buy the tank. So uh, pretty much that night I went online uh, <laughs> and bought the tank. So pretty much this is my dream tank. It's as big as I pretty much needed to go. It's about 140 gallons in total. I bought all the Vortec equipment, all the MP40s, the Vortec pump, all the Apex equipment. And I got uh, two of the power blocks. And then I also went with the Nios equipment as far as the media reactor. So you got the, the Torx, yep. I think is what they're called, and the uh, quantum skimmer. Yep, and we got two of the Torx, two of the reactors. Probably a little bit of overkill, but you know, go big or go home. That's it, <laughs> and, and that is the mantra of this system. Everything is top of the line. Everything is brand spanking new. You can just smell the new aquarium on it. Like it's insane. Um, so you bought, uh, now you went with uh, Ecotech Radions, which I'm a huge, Gen 4 Radions. huge, for, huge uh, proponent of, you went with the non-pros. Correct. Why? Yeah. Just didn't really feel like I needed it, couldn't really justify the extra money. They were about $100, $150 more per unit, so I figured I'd cut back there a little bit so I can kind of go elsewhere as far as the And invest that money elsewhere, yeah. or in this case, be able to afford the third, which you probably did that was necessarily need but yep that was a big thing I was considering going with a smaller unit but I kind of like things to be symmetrical so I kind of saved going pros versus the regular gen tours. And you're gonna have all the light you need on that especially oh, yeah. with um, like so on mine I have the gen 3 non pros and they do fantastic in the back I get awesome color awesome growth you're not gonna be disappointed with them at all oh, yeah. um, and uh, let me just tell you guys, this tank, this is the Red Sea Reefer 525 XL. Um, it comes with the tank, the stand, the sump, a, um, a divider for the refugium if you want to run a refugium or not. Um, it has a, an auto top off reservoir built into it and a nice um, side cabinet over here that's separated from the main cabinet that um, houses all of your electronics and controllers and all that sort of good stuff. He liked to go Apex with this, which, I mean, tried and true. You can't be Apex. I don't think right now there's not a competitor that um, that beats Apex in their game of tank controlling. Oh yeah. And so what modules did you have, like, what, did, what all on the Apex do you have right now? I just got the standard Apex unit. It came with the salinity, the pH, what was the third one? ORP? The ORP, yep. Okay. So it comes with those three. Which I found absolutely no use for. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I know. It came with the whole kit, so <laughs> it is what it is. That's, we'll get the monitor. I did get the little display as well, the newer display. Okay. And uh, that's pretty much it. Okay. And um, did you get the dose? No, I did not. You haven't got the dose yet. That's coming. Okay. Next. So, all right. So you are planning on doing that. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Um, he already has uh, some, some food already. We don't even have fish in this oh, thing, yeah. but we got food. <laughs> I got um, food, coral dip. <laughs> a coral dip, he is ready to go on this. He's already even ordered a couple fish and has them on quarantine with the company that, that uh, or with the LFS that he bought them from. I mean, this dude has thought this through. Um, and obviously he's consulted me on a few things, which Absolutely. I appreciate that. Absolutely. And, um, <clears throat> Oh, uh, peace of mind for the Ecotex. Yep. You ended up getting a uh, 
a, a battery, battery, backup. battery backup for that. And I was reading on that, and it's pretty sweet, actually. I didn't know that those battery backups can like power an MP40 for like 60 hours. So like multiple days, you can get out of um, you know running that. Stuff. I believe you can link them as well. Yeah, so you can daisy chain them. You can have two of them and have 120 hours of powering one pump. Yeah. And if you can power one MP40 for multiple days, you can get definitely get yourself through a power outage for sure. Oh yeah. So yeah. that's definitely worth the peace of mind. I think I looked at them and uh, they were south of a couple hundred bucks. So for that peace of mind, it's cheaper than a generator. Obviously, a generator you're going to be able to power your whole house, but this kicks in when you're not even there. Yep. So that's huge, and especially if you guys know me, I go on vacation a lot, I have some issues. Um, so I've got one on the way, um, it's it's in the mail, so keep an eye out for that. Um, we did the Aquascape in the, uh, what is it again? Carib Sea Life Rock. Carib Sea Life Rock. Um, a lot of unique shapes with this, really cool. Um, he bought more than, than what was needed, right? We had a lot of rock left over, but that was good because we were really able to cherry pick and choose which pieces we wanted for this. And so a little bit about the thought process. Well, you know what, you guys can check out the video for that. Uh, I always do this wrong. It's either right there or right there. I, I always get it wrong, I swear. We're starting a refugium, right? We are, yep, I got the Miracle Mud. Okay, so you're doing Miracle Mud. How many yeah. pounds of that did you buy? Uh, I believe about five pounds total. So you bought two things of it, right? Yeah, what are they coming on? I think that they're at least, I got five pounds. One. So we got 10 pounds of uh, Miracle Money. He bought two of these packages right here that he's gonna layer the bottom of this refugium with. Um, and do, any plans on what algae you're gonna grow? Uh, I haven't really thought about it, to tell you the truth. Okay. It's still kinda in the works, I guess. I would recommend Shado. Yeah, yeah simple, likely. easy, it stays to itself. Um, you don't really have to worry so much about it. Like. Um, I've always heard the like, core stories of it just going asexual and just like plastering yeah, the whole tank it with it um, and uh, yeah so. I did get the uh, marine Easy. beer balls as well. I got a gallon jug of those So Smart. I plan on putting a lot in there. Yeah, I would add those like if you can underneath your um, Your filter socks here. Yeah, or you can get a basket um, but maybe we can 3D print you one, or like build you something out of acrylic, like a box to put them in that has holes in it so the water can flow through. Mm -hmm, yeah. But we can just set them there so you can always kind of Take it out clean them out real quick, but in the salt water, not in any sort of fresh water. Yeah. Um, the Refugium, you bought a light for it, right? I did, but I don't think it's gonna work. I got the Kessel H80, I believe. Yeah, the small disc one, yep. right? It has a little mount, and I just can't really find a spot to mount it on there because it's too thick. The sump here is pretty, pretty crazy, and takes up the entire cabinet. Yeah. Really thick glass, and that bracket is probably about two and a half, three inches. So if you were to, yeah, I mean, if you were to basically mount it onto this glass, it'd be right up against the door. It hits the door. The door won't close. Yeah. So the only other option I thought maybe is on the divider wall, but I don't think I really want to put it in the water. In the water. Yeah. Or yeah. could you hang it off of? You could. I guess you could flush mount it. You could. Like um, suspend it maybe. Like, do they have like any sort of like thing where you can use large? They have the flush mount for that one. I was thinking about possibly upgrading to, I believe, the 180, which is more like the canister yep. light, and maybe hanging that down instead. So, yeah. it's unique. The um, the, the how uh, how long this is and how narrow it is. I mean, you can make it larger in the sump area, yeah, yeah, the gotcha. refugium area, but it, that's hard to light. Yeah, it's definitely a hard thing to light. So. I was thinking that when I did put the light in, that it seemed pretty slim. I kind of prefer to go bigger, but then you're kind of taken away from the skimming side as well. Yeah. It's almost too big. I almost wish it was And I between. think that what you bought for the Miracle Mud, I think you're going to be happy with the depth that you get when you have the smaller section. Yeah. Um, because the thicker the mud is, the more denitrification that you're going to get out of it. Yeah. So if you run it really thin, you're not going to get a whole lot of those types of benefits out of uh, yeah. having that mud. So I think this is the best way to go, and that gives you more room back there. Plus, you're not going to be looking at getting a ton of nutrient reduction out of that. Yeah. You're running media anyway, so I'm assuming you're going to be running GFO and carbon. I got GFO, carbon, and then I have a second one as well, so I did get two of the reactors, okay. and then for the bio pellets as well. 
Okay. So, so you're not going to be relying on this refugium for a ton of nutrient export. So yeah. running a small one, I think, is your best. Plan. I got it more too for like the trace elements and stuff. The benefits that they say that kind of provide. So that was more of my reasoning to want to do the refugium. Mm -hmm. And then this is the newer V3 model as well that they did upgrade or comes built in. This is a new upgrade. Oh, okay, so this it. this sump is a, is an upgraded sump. Yeah, it's, it's V3 like a newer, version. Yep. Okay, newer version of it. Yep. I didn't know that. All right. It comes pre-built in with the refugium wall, and then the cups. Everything's different. The plumbing originally is in the back side. I believe it's only two cups, so now it's four cups with the built-in refugium. Okay. All right. That's cool. Um. And so I mean, all of this, all of this equipment is like super sexy. Um, I, again, I've never seen a build like this where everything was brand new and just um, just as, as top of the line as you can possibly get with this. Um, you're gonna, ha I mean, that's gonna, basically what you're doing is you're setting yourself up for success because there's not a whole lot, um, that equipment can break down, but, but it's a lot less likely to happen yeah. and you're putting yourself at where all the levels, the flow, the lighting, you know, it's gonna be where it needs to be. I talked to you about adding maybe a couple to the back, just to add a little bit more flow. You could add like a gyre to yeah. each side of the back. That might be cool and add some different types of flow to the tank. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I think adding some flow to the back of the tank would also be good. But I mean, this this tank is super sexy and I'm really excited to get it, to get it plumbed up and Absolutely. get water in it, and get sand in it. Oh, let's talk about the sand real quick, and um, yeah. I got two different versions. We got some of the Carib Sea Special Grade. I actually got some of the Pink Fiji as well, but after kind of thinking in the process through a little bit more and I want a heavy flow tank, I decided to go with some of the heavier sand. So we're gonna throw the Pink Fiji down on the bottom and then cover that. I believe I got 40 pounds mm -hmm. of the Special Grade. Going That's down. a good idea, because yeah. that Fiji Pink, it's very common, very popular, a lot of people like to use it, um, but not a lot of people know about the special grade. Yeah. I mean, when you before you were researching, have you ever had you ever heard of it? Not really. To tell you the truth, yeah. No, because not a lot of people use it. But there's an LFS in in our neck of the woods um, here in Tampa, right? Yeah. Um, Coral Corral. Coral Corral. And his tanks are banging with SPS. He's got this SPS tank up in the front that is just, oh yeah. it's crazy. It's crazy, oh yeah. <laughs> and, um, Dream Coral. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and he runs special grade. Here's the reason why. You gotta run a ton of flow. You're running SPS, you're gonna run a ton of flow, yeah. right? And you don't want sandstorms in your tank. Fiji Pink has sand uh, grain sizes, some that are larger and some that are very small. And then you're even gonna have like chunks of shell in there, sometimes. Um, and you're gonna end up with pockets of where your sand blows right out of the right out of the corners or mounds up in the center or it's all pushed out of the middle and onto the edges. Special grade, everything is exactly the same size. Yep. And what I found is is that your snails are gonna be able to clean that grain or the, those grains of sand a little bit better. Yep. You're gonna be able to crank up the flow a little bit higher. So you're not gonna have as much um, cyano growing on your sand and things like that. And um, and then your corals are going to benefit from that added flow. Yep. And you can still have wrasses. You can still have um, sand sifting gobies if you choose to with that with that type of sand. So I highly recommend that special grade. Tell us what you guys think about the equipment list on this tank. Tell us what you would add in the comments below. Right? Oh, yeah. I can't wait. Can't wait to that. <laughs> and uh, give this video a like. You can check out some more videos right over here, right where Tim's head is, and. Uh, poke his belly if you're um, want to subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys later. Later.